Hello and welcome to another Raspberry Pi operating system install video. Today we're going to install CentOS. So CentOS has a very common goal and that is to bring free enterprise class computing to anyone and it uses a upstream support model similar to Red Hat, which I believe it's spun off of. Uh, I have not yet installed CentOS on Raspberry Pi, so this will be the first time I see this, so I don't have a lot of history or back information behind it. I tend to stay away from Red Hat distributions or Red Hat style distributions and go more towards the Ubuntu, Kubuntu versions, so I don't use this regularly. So we're going to be seeing it both at the same time. So here is the centos.org web page where they talk about the project, they talk about what's going on, and all of the different things it is standing it's uh, all the different things it stands for. So you can look at the about, go to the community, they have a host of documentation and help. So in order to find your download version, you would click on this Get CentOS Now, and you can order a DVD ISO, or actually you can download a DVD ISO or a minimal ISO to get you started. Neither of these will work on a Raspberry Pi, however. So what we need to do is we need to click on this Alternative Downloads, and that will bring you to the next page that I'm going to go to, which will put you in all the different operating systems for alt arch or releases. So here is the main distribution. <clears throat> and this is a little confusing because it has the X386 and X8664 up here and it kind of looks a little like this would where you would want to be because we've already come to the alt alternative downloads, but these are the base distributions. So as said up here, just pay attention to this. And as you come down here to the alternative architecture special interest groups, you can see all the different versions that you're looking at for Power9, PowerPC64, i386, ARM, HFP, and ARCH64. So this would be the one we wanted, and I think I went with, honestly, I don't remember which one I went with. ARM 7 Raspberry Pi, KDE. I went with the KDE version. So this would be the one that I picked. You could pick GNOME, KDE, Minimal, GNOME Generic, KDE Generic, Minimal Generic, I prefer KDE, <clears throat> so I picked that version. You pick whatever makes you comfortable. Uh, I know there's a big hot debate between KDE and GNOME between Linux communities, and that's fine. Pick what you like. This one gives you the most options to get the one that you find to be the most useful. Now, they also have cloud containers and other things that you can check out here. And then they have the archived versions going down here of the older versions of CentOS in case you need something historical for whatever specific reason. Going all the way back to 2.1. I think that's very reasonable of them. So that is a good thing that they retain previous versions for a very, very long time. As you can see here, CentOS is available free of charge. We do accept non-financial donations for improving hosting, promoting CentOS. If CentOS is important to you, please support the long-term viability of the CentOS project. Uh, as I said, I've not had an opportunity to run CentOS yet, so we're going to run it the first time together and take a look at it and see what is what. Now I have the CentOS, as you've already seen, KDE image right here, and I have already burned this to a flash drive or to my SD card. If you need to know how to do that, I will provide, provide the links in the descriptions to previous videos I made on how to burn images to SD cards for your reference. Please refer to those. I have ones for Windows, 
I did not see the need to make them for Linux because most Linux users already know how to burn things to SD cards and no one seemed to have any interest in seeing more videos on those. And my Mac is currently out of commission and probably will not be returning until I get another one and I don't know when that's going to be. So I did not have an opportunity to do any videos on Mac OS because my Mac's SD card controller is non-functional. Uh, I have a very old Mac laptop. I would very much like to get a new one, but it is not financially in the cards right now. Uh, I have other things I want to do, and that is the least of my concerns <clears throat> in replacing my laptop just because of a bad SD card controller. So we'll take it as this. Go watch those videos if you need assistance on how to burn an SD card image. They're all relatively the same. There is one distribution that I know of that's different, and I'll get to that when I get to it. But follow the instructions, and then come back, and we'll go ahead and do the first boot together. So we're on to that now. Hey there, welcome back to see the desktop of CentOS 7. So what we have here is, I actually missed the first boot, but there was nothing noteworthy, just standard scrolling that Linux boxes usually do when they boot up. And I have this running on a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, or at least one of my threes, I'm not sure which one it is right off the top of my head, through a wired connection, and I'm using a USB keyboard and mouse. Now, one thing that I've noticed, and I actually am recording this second time, well, I'm recording it for the first time, but my uh, recording software failed to start. So I am recording it for, well, going over it for the second time at least. Uh, one thing that I did notice is that my mouse is causing some hitching as it moves around. It's not linear, and it tends to have a little bit of drag to it. Uh, that has not gotten any better as this has been running. And it's been up for a little bit, probably 5-10 minutes, while I talked about it. <clears throat> and I don't know if the DPI is just too high on my mouse and it's confusing it, or we're just running a little low on system resources. So let's take a little bit of a look around the CentOS desktop. I'm going to put my keyboard down because we're not going to need that. There we go. Oh, I'm going to need some mouse for this one. <clears throat> now, when CentOS booted up, it did ask for a username and password, to which I put in root and CentOS, all lowercase. Did not really Google that beforehand, just gave it a shot, and what do you know? Hacking. So this is the KDE flavor, which is pretty standard CentOS KDE. And that gives us our link to uh, the KDE homepage. Again, in case you missed it, there is a GNOME version and there is a minimalist version you can run as well. I just happen to prefer KDE. I'm more familiar with it, so I would notice if something was missing, whereas with GNOME, I may not. But looking at what we have here, we have a pretty feature-rich operating system, standard menu setup, computer, everything looks very standard for what we're expecting to see out of KDE. So we've got administration, which has two options in it, firewall and set the time and the date, graphics, which has the viewers, screen capture program, and color chooser and screen roller for more applications. I don't know why they feel they had to put those under more applications. There's plenty of room under that menu. Internet, Bluetooth, desktop sharing, download manager, uh, Conqueror, and Firefox for web browsers. So you'd have to add Chromium if that was what, something you wanted to do. Multimedia, we have a sound mixer. No sound player, though. Just a sound mixer. So you're going to be a little restricted with the base install as to what you can actually do for sound and video. 
<coughs> our system settings. We're going to explore some of those in a minute. Under our utilities, we've got uh, archive tool, character selector, clipboard, encryption, backup, time tracker, scientific calculator, pop-ups, screen magnifier, system cleaner, and a text editor. So very standard KDI, KDE setup. So let's go through our info center because this is one thing that I did in the last video that I found was interesting. I opened up the info center, I took a look at what we had for the summary, and I took a look at the memory. And this is how our memory is currently dividing up. Right now we have a 488, well, 511 meg swap file. Uh, we've got 972 meg of physical RAM, just short of a gig. Uh, we have 307 meg of free of physical memory because the disk cache is using 34% of the physical memory and application data is using 30%. I have a feeling this would be dynamic and it would push this down as physical memory had more demands on it. And we're not using any of our swap space. Let's see if we can get some device information. Not really going to tell me much what I need to know because it doesn't expect to see those things. Anyway, when I went into too much to dig through Bluetooth, it did crash the Bluetooth menu. So this could be a 3 and not a 3 plus, as in a Raspberry Pi 3. So here are our system settings, all pretty standard. If you hover over them, it tells you what's inside of it. Uh, your account details, you definitely want to set up another account because you do not want to run a box, especially when connected to the internet as a root. Personal information. Shortcuts and gestures. So you can set up your own gestures and keyboard shortcuts. Great for a laptop. Great for anything with a keypad. Not so great for a Raspberry Pi that doesn't have one, but it's better to have the availability to have it than not have it and have something eventually that can use it. Workspace appearance, I would keep these as minimal as possible because, in fact, I would actually ditch this whole background and just make it one solid color to try to improve some of the performance. And when I went into the Bluetooth settings, I did have some problems with it and it did eventually crash, telling me there was no adapter found, which probably leads me to believe this is one of my threes and not a three plus. It's hard to tell anymore. I have so many of them in the same cases, and I didn't bother to mark them when I put them in there. So, regardless, the performance is similar on the two. So, keep in mind that if you're running this on a three or a three plus, you're going to see fairly similar performance. But these are the system options you can configure. And like I said, if you're unsure, you can hover over it. It'll tell you what it does. It'll also tell you what's underneath of it in case you're looking for something, which makes it easier when you search for something. So searching in the, t in the bar up here would key in on energy savings if we type that in, since that is included in power management. And I don't have my keyboard connected, so we're not going to be able to do that. But that's not the point of this video. So the 10 minute review on this operating system is that it is functional. It has a lot of good features. It's stable. It gives you a lot of system information, which is important, but it, it's plagued with some of the same things that Ubuntu Mate was having trouble with when it first came out, in that performance is not the best, even though it's adequate. <clears throat> so this is better in that aspect. I know when I ran Mate on my first installed the first version when it first came out it was very very difficult to get anything to, to, to work because it just did not have enough leftover system resources to run a lot of applications and when they were running it was a little bit light on what it could and couldn't do regardless this does work it does run it does give you about one third of your memory free Plus, you have a swap file, so you can run some applications, you can get some things done. 
my issue with the mouse is mostly visually not pleasant, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. It actually works. It's just you're going to see a little bit of drag on your mouse as you run it back and forth across the screen. It's not terrible, but I can see it. I can see when I move it, it doesn't start moving right away, and when I stop it, it moves a little bit afterwards. So there are some performance hiccups, but then again, like I said, I'm using a high-performance gaming mouse on this machine. It may actually just be feeding it too much information at too high a DPI, which is confusing it, and it probably needs to be tuned. I'm not going to go through that because what we're going to do is we're going to wipe this SD card and put another operating system on it later. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time checking out this. Now, one thing that I do probably think I might do at the end of this series is I may come back and experiment to see whether the GNOME version or the KDE version feels better and maybe try to do some benchmarking if I can find a benchmarking tool for this. So I'll make a note of that and once we've got all the operating systems laid out that I want to explore for the Raspberry Pi, we can go back through and check out some more things about them and try some testing and try some other things. But this is just an introduction to CentOS 7. Like I said, I did not run it previously so I am not a pro on what it entails. I'm seeing it the same as you if this is your first time seeing it. Uh, I'm impressed with it. It definitely seems like it would hold up. And I think maybe, uh, maybe this would be a great operating system for a lot of small tasks, a lot of light computing, web browsing, things like that. Uh, I don't know how it would work with a music player because it doesn't come with one but it does seem to do the job that it was intended to do. Continue to move forward. We'll continue to compare this against other operating systems. And again, if you have any questions, I will definitely do my best to answer them, but I am not the pro at CentOS, uh, so I may have to refer you to the, the community for CentOS, but I will see if I can figure it out with you if we have to as best that I can. And if you have any comments or suggestions or questions or things you want to see me do with these operating systems when we're done, definitely post those down in the description because I'm very interested in pursuing what more we can do with these once we've got them all laid out. Uh, this gives you a brief introduction to it and an option to compare it to what you're used to if this is an operating system we've run before to see how it runs in the Raspberry Pi as well as to make a choice as to what might work best for you in your situation taking into account what you want to do with it based on what we're seeing in these videos after the installation. And that's my primary focus for these. So with that, I'm going to close this video and we will start on the next one tomorrow and see how that goes. Uh, I had actually planned on doing something else and ran into a snag. So this was kind of a, kind of a out of order from where I wanted to do it. But uh, the one that I wanted to do did not come out the way I thought it was going to. So we are going to have to re-explore that one later. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate all of you. Definitely enjoy doing more stuff with the Raspberry Pi. Glad my voice is back. And even though it's still out in and out a little bit, it's way better than it was. So thanks for bearing with me on that. And uh, my lack of focus because of the... Uh, being sick for the last month, but uh, we're back on track now. So see you guys later. Take it easy.